part of this actually started over the last few years, and, and it's, I would consider, we're lucky that the industry has slowed down. And I'm probably the only person that would say that, but the one thing that I know in my career, I have always been somebody who wanted to drive change. The hardest thing to do in a company that has had a track record of success is to challenge something different. Because what you'll hear is, we can't, we won't, we're not, that's not what we do, or you, then you'll have the lawyers, or I hope there's no food safety and QA people in here, but then they'll say, well, you know, someone will die, and there's all these dire circumstances to do something that nobody's ever done before. What's great about a small startup is they don't have all these people to say what you can't do. And the reality is they're also a bit off the radar for folks like USDA and FDA, so you can get away with making claims that might be a little looser than what big food can do. So the challenge we've asked ourselves is if you took the global reach of a big CPG and you took the capital and resources available, but you applied a startup mindset to that, then what could be done? But you can't just do that because anybody who's worked in a big company knows that somebody will come up with a great big idea and then process and efficiency kills the great big idea. And we didn't want to be able to, we didn't want that to happen. So we've got a couple of innovation models. We have 1894, which is actually our venture capital arm. We invest in small startups that are too small for us to purchase, but they're bigger than if we were to incubate them on our own. So ideas that we wouldn't launch on our own, we invest in companies that we think are interesting for us to watch. Uh, some of the partnership, the hatchery, you saw Natalie talk this morning, we have a partnership with the hatchery. That gives us visibility to some of those small companies that we might want to invest in. And some of those you'll see me talk about today, uh, things like Cooley Cooley. Um, I think Lisa has an amazing story, and she's really brought awareness to Moringa, which I saw today in one of the drinks, and the story around that functional ingredient. But what Lisa needed was the capital, but she also needed some commercial expertise and resources to help scale her idea. We don't run the business, but we provide resources and expertise. That's a bit of what 1894 does. And I sit on that investment committee, and we treat it just the way you would if you were a private equity bank. We review the ideas, we review the performance, we up additional capital, and we provide the resources and expertise to help those ideas to survive. But what's even better is it's allowed parts of my team to also be engaged in that. So there's a bit of cross-cultural mentoring. What you don't get in a big company is that startup feel, that startup mentality. So we have a partnership and investment with Cargo. If you're familiar, Cargo are the small vending machines that are inside Uber and Lyft. We actually have somebody on our team that manages the cargo relationship and actually spends time on site with cargo. So I get a chance to almost teach my team how to be an entrepreneur from the mindset of an entrepreneur. Tiger Tank is our internal incubator. We have a process whereby, just like Shark Tank, we have ideas that come from our teams. We choose those ideas, we give them seed investment, they bring those to market. The Kellogg NYC Cafe, if you've been in New York City, you would have seen this. Uh, it started out in Times Square, we've now moved it to its permanent location, it is a chance for us to really allow people to play with our food. Uh, and that came out of an initiative from Tiger Tank, and then obviously traditional uh, M&A. 545 is what's a bit unique for us. 545 is actually our address here in Chicago. Um, we created a separate tax entity about three years ago because we wanted to be able to launch products without the consumer knowing that they were from the Kellogg company. I also wanted a team of people who would not be encumbered by big food. So we hired people who had never been uh, or, or didn't come from our industry. They came out of Silicon Valley. We intentionally did not onboard them to the company because I really didn't want them to know how we do things. I wanted them to tell us how we should do things. And we ring-fenced their, really their responsibilities. We gave them complete access, but they were only accountable to me. And I, that allowed us to protect them a bit from what happens when the body rejects the organ in big food and pushes out the ideas because we can't. We won't, we're not, all those reasons. And I'll walk you through uh, a really exciting initiative that came out of that.